Thank you Sorry. for fixing my red camera. <laughs> Yeah, I think what happened was um, it has a drawing feature. Oh, no. And I think you were drawing well, on I it. Well, I think the cable was draped over I think it. you're drawing on it. I, okay. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Whatever. Back to business. Uh, okay, so we've got these magnetic... Actually, last week we put in um, these really cool magnetic tip cables. They're data yeah. and power. And on one hand, they've got... On one end, they've got the USB-A or USB-C. On the end, other end, you can have adjustable different tips. And so last week... We had gotten the USB-C tip in. This week we got the yeah. um, micro USB and yeah. the iOS Lightning, which yeah. I will show as well as this wonderful demo. Um, again, it goes it goes either way. It's USB-C, yeah. and you pick different tips. And what I thought was nice about this is yes. that you could have one cable, yes. different connectors, and like these. I'll tell you, like I've tried other ones, and yeah. there was a reason we haven't carried these until now, is they were always like never that great. Um, but they're much, much better now, and I actually really like this cable, and I like these tips. So let's go to the overhead real fast. Okay. And I will show it off. The newly refreshed overhead. The newly refreshed overhead. So this is the cable. Uh, so we showed this off last week, and I will focus lock. Um, so it's type C if you want, if you have a you know USB C connector, you have a MacBook, type A if you are uh, on a Windows computer like me. And then um, I'm going to plug this into my little extension cord here. Um, one thing I like, it has a little power LED, tells you that it's lit up. Um, it does data and power. This is the micro USB. It works great. Or if you want the USB-C tip, it comes with a tip, uh, USB-C, um, but it also, hold on, yeah, there you go. So this is running the demo I'm going to show later, uh, USB-C demo, and then um, you've also, have got, of course, got a lightning connector, which I forgot my iPad is dead. But yeah. if it was not dead, it would be charging. I, I left it, unfortunately, um, for a couple of days. But the tip does work. Yeah, we'll well, I'll turn it. on in a second if you like that. Oh, yeah, see, it's like, yeah, hi, now, why, now why did you do that? Now we really could tell it now works. Now it's really upset. It's like, you please yeah. plug that back in. So I'm going to let this yeah. charge. That's one of the things. A lot of times there's the interesting stuff out there. But we have to test it all, and a lot of it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and so we're only willing to stock and support the things that we've tested, and then we've also been using these uh, for a while and kind of went through all its paces. Yeah, and I like this because it's got like a nice woven cable, and it's got the USB-C or A at the end. Yeah. And it's nice that you can get extra tips and, and plug it in. I find this useful because I don't want to have five th – I don't have to plug in all the things at once, but I do need to switch between all these different kinds of cables all the time. Yep. Okay, next up. Yeah. Okay, next up. I got this for uh, Noah and Pedro's project, uh, but their project got finished before the cables came in. This is a USB 3 to SATA adapter. Um, basically, you know, every time there's a new Raspberry Pi, people are like, hey, why haven't you added SATA connectors? It's like, well, because they didn't. Uh, it's very small. It's a $35 computer. Uh, but if you want to add SATA, it's yeah, really easy. Go. This cable uh, gives you the SATA power and data on the ends, uh, and it has a USB-A 3.0 on the other, so it goes like, I think it's like six gigabit per second speed. Um, you know, I do have it plugged in here into a large laptop. I will say USB-A is only really good for like about an amp, um, so it's best used with SSDs, uh, not necessarily a, a, or a laptop drive. Um, I happen to have only this really big old Western digital. I'm actually... Junk. I, where do we shoot this photo? Because it sh honestly should be an SSD. I don't want to promise that it works for these gigantic old disk yeah. drives. By the way, this is not included if you buy it. And the disk drive is not <laughs> included. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, this is very handy. And then of course, check out Noah and Pedro's awesome guide on how to turn a Raspberry Pi or other single board computer into a multimedia server for your home. Okay. Next up. We've got from Monk Makes, our favorite, uh, one of our favorite British makers. We have no favorites. They're all our favorites. Um, that's favorite spelled with a U. Yeah. Uh, Monk Makes uh, makes adorable electronics uh, for Microbit, but also for MicroPython and Arduino in general. Uh, this is designed for the Microbit, and it's got a humidity and temperature sensor and a moisture sensor and RGB LED. And it's designed to make gardening projects and sensing projects really easy. It's low cost. It's very affordable. Um, pair it with a micro bit or just use alligator clips to clip it onto your favorite microcontroller, circuit Python, a Clue, what have you, a Pico. Um, yeah. There's header soldered on the back. Uh, there's no soldering required. 
and uh, he's got a whole bunch of code as well. So check out that and all the other great Monk Makes products. And uh, these are all of the wireless LEDs. Ooh, this that's is, the code. This is the Bonanza. Yes. Tonight. Okay. At Cornucopia. At corn Let me. Um, sorry, I have to set this up because. I have to yeah, I'm going to show all these videos that we did. Okay. They did a good job. So with we these. already had the. Well, people were like, "Wait, you already have the wireless LEDs in store?" Yes, uh, but we didn't have the big ones, and people wanted the big Berthas. So there's two sizes of wireless LEDs, and I will actually admit, at first I did not realize that there was multiple sizes. But if you look at yeah. this photo, yeah, and just by the way, if you go to our site, we have we have you know the selection page where you can yeah. you can do this. So you want to show the yeah the, yeah. So on the right, there's the small inductor, and on the left is the large one. So we've had the small ones in stock, but they actually you know the, the way the inductive chargers work, of course, is we've got the big ring uh, that forms the primary, and these coils form the secondary. Um, the magnetic field passes through the coil and and charges up the LEDs. Um, and if you're using the small ring, you know you pretty much have to be right there. But what's nice is if you have the big yeah. ring and the large wireless LEDs, they can work as far as um, like 30-ish centimeters away. The red LEDs are are particularly dim, but some of the white LEDs um, and I think the green ones in particular are very responsive. Um, show it down yeah, now. let's show them the overhead. They come in packs of 10. I love doing the demo for these because What's it's What's great like, is you don't have to take them out of the bag. I don't have to take them out of the bag and like lose them. Uh, they're right here. So of course the best um, transmission you're gonna get is when they're coaxial, which means that the ring is in the center. Well, it doesn't mean center, but you know, close to the middle, not on the outside yeah, of the ring. Here. I'll put this on my hand here. Oh, you want to put yeah, just okay. isn't this neat? Isn't this cool? It's, ma it's magical. It's by magical. The way. Yeah, look at this. But it will always work How best if it it's possible? coaxial, so like yes, yeah. to sticking up, and then lift your hand up, so you can get about ten, maybe about up to six, okay. ten inches look away. Far, look, at, it's still lit. It's, it's still, lit. still lit. It does get dimmer, and then it stops. So we did a couple measurements. So each one has the using the the big ring at, at twenty four volts. How far away it'll work. Yeah. Um, with white, blue, and the colors do act a little differently. One thing, another thing we learned is not all the colors are uh, work at the same distances. So red, in particular, uh, I think it's dimmer a little earlier than the green because the green is just ultra bright. So yeah. there you go. Um, so you get the large ones, you get the small ones. Of course, the larger ones work at farther distances, but they are larger, so you'll need to be you know you can't fit them into as tiny spots. Um, but that said, we have all the different colors, uh, so choose your favorite color and your favorite size. Okay, and yeah, you can go to the one-page destination on our site if you want to. And then don't forget, you need the coil as well. Yeah. But one coil can power you know, dozens of LEDs, as you see. Okie oh, dokie, next up. Okay, uh, by popular request, I'm finally getting to some more iSpy boards. There's just been so many revisions. Um, and hold on, I actually had the demo, and then of course I... Yeah. Uh, so the you know I'm going Oops. to use this magnetic cable. Can I hit the no this uh, sorry no five six one three yeah, okay sorry. thank you. Uh, so this is the um, I Spy breakout board. So all of our displays that we've been making lately, um, you know people have said like wow you know the quick STEM IQT stuff for I squared C has been awesome because it makes it so easy to plug in I squared C sensors, no soldering, you get power ground data clock. Wouldn't it be cool if you did the same thing for displays? And so um, the idea here is, is you can't use just wires because you need a lot of pins for displays because there's you know, the SPI and the SD card and the touch screen and the memory and reset and backlight. So you, basically it's 18 pins. Um, and if you look on uh, like this image, you'll see uh, our 1.9 inch display, which I'm also gonna demo has a little latchy connector on it. If you use this flex cable, and you can use a very long flex cable because uh, flex cables are pretty good at high frequency um, data passing, you can um, then easily wire up displays that are not right next to uh, your screen. So, you know, normally I'd have solder and wire and plug it all in, but this is actually just uh, plugged in via this uh, flex connector. And I'll just show, I'll just, I'll disconnect with my magnetic USB cable. Oh, yeah. And then I'll show, it's really easy to um, insert this cable in. We have these in various lengths from short, medium, long, and you can of course get uh, flex cables very easily in other lengths. 
Um, and then this is just to break it because you're like, okay, well, I've got the cable. I still have to wire it up on the other side. But this way, it's like you, you know, you don't have to pass long cables for the data. There's also another issue people were having where they're like, why am I not able to pass the SP, you know, 80 megahertz clock data so quickly through my jangly wires? It's like, well, you got jangly wires. Mm. Uh, this way, you've got nice short breadboard wires, uh, and they go into the cable, and the cable can snake out, and then you can mount this uh, wherever you like without having to worry about uh, cables hanging up. It's a much neater uh, collection. Of course, we'll, uh, we'll have little add-ons that are designed for feather wings and Raspberry Pi, but we wanted to start with the, the breakout board version. Okie dokie, and then the stars of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, our staff, everyone here at Adafruit who makes things go, the community, More. this wonderful world is... Uh, Wait, we keep going? What? Keep going. We just did that one. Yeah, we did that one. Yeah. Now sorry. it's this one. Yay! The, LT the LTR 329 right. and LTR 330. Uh, yeah. these are, this is a two... A two and one. Um, these are both very similar sensors. Uh, just one second, I'm going to grab the the magnetic cable yeah, for the micro. Yeah, somehow my, my uh, well, it's okay. Oh they all look the some same. Of, yeah, some of my, my some of my photos got out of order this week. You know, we should do magnetic stems one day. I know. Um, we well, we have those magnetic connectors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all these are kind of blending into one right now. I know. So they're, well, everything looks very similar. 610 and okay. then 55. So the LTR 303 and the LTR 329 are both light on I squared C digital sensors. They're good up to, I think, like 64 kilolux. Um, they both have adjustable gains and they have like different integration rates and measurement rates. And they're just really nice little light sensors and they're very inexpensive. Um, and here's just the demo showing. I'll get this stuff out of the way because there's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, the sensors uh, have uh, visible plus IR and then infrared um, uh, diodes inside. There's two channels, and then you know when you cover them up, it goes down, and when you you can change the gain. Just you know, basically it's up to 16 bits, and uh, depending on how um, bright you want it, you can adjust the gain to to give you a good range. Um, they both have STEM IQT connectors. Um, the drivers actually are, live in the same libraries. We have Arduino and CircuitPython slash Python library, so you can use it with any Arduino board. You can use it with a Raspberry Pi, single board computer, desktop with a FT232H, et cetera. The um, 329 is, is you know, the simplest version, and then the 303, um, let's explain why I have both. I actually, so originally I wanted to just do the 329 because I, I was going to use it for a project, and I thought, Let's make a breakout. The 303 is basically the same sensor, but it has an interrupt pin. And like you, you know, it's, it really is just not connected on the 329. Um, it only exists on the 303. You know, do you need the interrupt pin? If you don't, go with the 329. If you do, go with the 303. You know, again, the driver code is basically the same. Um, on the back, you can uh, cut the trace to uh, get rid of the uh, green LED. They only have one I squared C address. That said, there is no simpler, easier, smaller light sensor that we found, um, especially if you're going to replace, we got this to replace an analog light sensor um, and we want it to be extremely compact. Uh, this one's definitely smaller than the BH1750. It's smaller than the Vemel 770 for sure, which is huge and chunky. Um, and the code's very easy to use and it's a very simple interface, and but it kind of does everything you want. So, uh, you know, two nice, simple light sensors. Uh, great for everyday, uh, you know, visible infrared, and then you subtract them to get just visible light sensing. And then if you want threshold interrupt support, uh, check out the 303. All right. And that is new products this week. New, 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 new,